welcome to my channel and I'm back with you once again with another video of Microsoft Flight Simulator 24. So nowadays I'm exploring the Cessna 172 equipped with Garmin G1000 and in this regard I'm making a series of videos for the beginners so that it's easy for you to look for a specific information on my channel. I'm trying to break down all the information into different videos so that you know um, uh, you can easily find your topic of interest rather than you know just like putting all the information in one video. It gets difficult. So uh, right now I'm doing the short flight to Islamabad and uh, in this video I will tell you how to uh, perform a missed approach with the Cessna 172. Um, you don't have to perform this procedure in the simulator, <laughs> obviously you just land. But still if you want to practice your landing skills and if you think your landing was not really good, you can fly this procedure and just come back and land again. So right now you can see on your screens that this flight plan is coming. What I can do is this, I can just uh, take you through the flight plan and let's see if uh, the missed approach procedure is loaded over here or not. So just press a flight plan, bring your cursor over here, uh, press it with the left mouse button, keep on pressing it and then press the right key, uh, left mouse, uh, right mouse button and then you will see the cursor. Now just scroll through it and see, look at uh, this, this is basically your approach, ILS Y28, right? And you can see it over here on your screen as well. So it will take you to this point, II28, right? And then you will go to VNX and then after this IBIP6, this is the final approach fix, 6 nautical miles before the runway. And uh, then 4 nautical miles before the runway and you have the runway. Now after this you can see there is this arc kind of a thing coming. This is basically a missed approach procedure. So uh, once you land and you think, rather, you don't land. <laughs> so maybe after uh, landing, you will just want to go back again and try your landing again. Uh, you can do that. But otherwise, let's say low visibility, a crosswind, any issue, and you cannot land. So in this regard, you can just uh, um, take off again and then fly this missed approach procedure and land. So that's it. So now in this video, I will just take you through all the procedure, how to basically do this. Let's get rid of the flight plan. And uh, let's bring the tab and look at the approach plate. So this is the tab. And uh, if I click this, I can get the charts or rather it's easy way to do. Look at this option and you have all the charts available for this flight. Whatever is required, they are already loaded. So, uh, this is actually showing me ILS uh, for the 10, right? No, I don't want that. So, let's get back to this option. 28, right? If I'm not wrong, yes, it was 28, right? Yeah. Approaches. 28, right? And uh, this is the one. Let me change the orientation so that it's easy. Look at it. Now you will actually fly to this point ISDO. And uh, after this point, you will go to this immediate fix. And then from here, you turn left heading 278 degrees. And then you keep on flying. After declaring a missed approach, you will continue to fly in this heading 278 degrees. Then you will turn left 240 degrees. And then again, left 100 degrees. And then you will just come back to this point again. And then maybe you can just go to this point or the final approach fix and then you can just land. So it's totally up to you. But remember a few things that uh, if you're going to this point, then you have to consider everything into your flight plan. So as soon as I will declare a missed approach, I will start climbing and I will go to this um, um, point and I will try to reach 6,000 feet. And then from here, I can again try the approach. These are actually the Lido charts. Um, I'm just trying to find one thing if it's written. Actually, if you're trying, uh, if you're using uh, the Navigraph charts, the missed approach procedure is actually written over here on the top. So it totally tells you what should be your altitude and everything. Uh, but right now, as it's not coming over here, yeah, 
It's not shown. So anyhow, I will just uh, uh, go with whatever I have and I will just keep this tab over here. For your reference so that we can just keep on looking at uh, the chart because uh, the plane will appear over here and then with this i will just take you through all the missed procedures and i will tell you how you will just land back so right now i'm going for the landing and uh, just few things just let's go over them you can see um, the frequency of the localizer or the ils is there 110.7 and plus i'm also tracking the vr uh, the plane is in this uh, uh, the localizer mode uh, the cdi is over here which shows me that I'm aligned with the runway or not and plus it's showing me the glide slope uh, the heading bug is set to 278 let's have a closer look so you can see this heading bug is there because uh, you know after the missed approach procedure I will be flying on the heading now there is another thing uh, I'll just uh, take you through the flight plan as you can see, this altitude is coming 4,500. So once I declare the missed approach, I have to climb up to 4,500. This is this procedure is coming after 3,500 feet. Then I have to go to 4,500. So let's adjust the altitude over here. 4,500. So this altitude is locked. Obviously, I'm not climbing right now. So that's why I'm just entering this altitude over here. One thing that you have to remember that uh, once I decide to perform a go around or call it a missed approach, I have to give a full throttle, number one, and in order to just have a good vertical speed so that I can get to this altitude, 4,500, number one. Number two, I will start retracting the flaps because flaps are providing me lift right now, but they're also providing drag. So due to the drag, I might struggle with the speed. So... This is what you have to do. So right now you can see I'm not following the glide slope. So let's say at this point I decide that, you know, I'm not uh, going to perform a good landing. So I will just try to call it a missed approach. So I will give full throttle. And now I'll pitch up and I will start retracting the flaps. You can see. Now I will just try to keep the speed at 75 knots and I will start retracting the flaps. So let's uh, increase the vertical speed so that I get up to 4500. I will just keep on flying in this direction. At this point, I will activate the autopilot and uh, I will go in the heading mode. and. Uh, I will also activate the flight level change. Just press suspend if uh, the autopilot is not working. Uh, over here you will see this option coming as suspend. So you have to suspend basically. The plane thinks that you are still going for the landing. So you have to suspend the approach. So now I'm uh, flying in this uh, direction. 278 degrees as the plane is now in the heading mode. Now you can see uh, 4,500 feet is coming. So this is the altitude to which I have to climb to after declaring it a missed approach. Now it's um, basically a 240 degree turn. So I can set the heading bug to 240. Keep it like this. So now I'm going in this heading. And uh, plus you can also see it on your screen. Let's get rid of this flight plan. And now you can see all of the flight plan is gone. There is uh, nothing. And uh, interesting. <laughs> the approach procedure is also gone. So... I'll keep this uh, CDI mode on because now I'm not uh, following any GPS coordinate. So that's why I'm flying in the heading mode. 
Now, after flying in this heading 240, Wow, interesting view. Some low flying. <laughs> okay, so let's uh, turn, turn towards 100 degrees. So the plane has now leveled off at 4,500. Still the GPS, uh, so eyeless information is coming. And uh, what I can do is this. I can now again load the approach procedure. So select approach. Enter. And uh, let's say I again uh, select eyeless Y28, right? Enter. And vectors. Uh, I can just keep it blank like this or maybe it can select BTR or I can select ISDOR again with the smaller knob you can select ISDOR enter and then just go over here and press activate and enter now the flight plan is again there you can go to this point ISDOR and then you can go to this point II28 right and then you can go for the landing uh, it is uh, again 6,000 feet required, so I can climb up to 6,000 feet. I can do this complete procedure again. So what I can do right now is this: that I will change the altitude to 6,000. And uh, I will go with the vertical speed and I will pitch up. Let's uh, bring the plane to the nav mode. And at 85 knots, I can get the flight level change. Then I don't have to worry about the vertical speed. This video is already there in which I've explained uh, the vertical speed and the flight level change. So if this is a bit confusing for you, you can just uh, go and watch that video. But uh, if I press uh, flight level change right now, then the plane will automatically adjust the vertical speed as per the thrust given. So right now you can see the plane is going towards ISDOR. Again, I'll go climb up to 6,000 feet at this point because the, there's this constraint. And then I will again descend and go for the approach. And at this point, maybe I can also decide to go to IBIP 6. This is the final approach fix. Or maybe I can fly to I I to it right. This is totally up to me. Let me see if I can change it. I I to it right. So if I press this drag button and if I click this option over here, which shows you the keyboard, so I can just type in from my keyboard I I to it right. This point is coming. I can use this larger knob. Uh, sorry, I can press enter and then enter and it's activated now instead of going to ISDO the plane will go to II28 right and the altitude will be 5000 feet this is another thing that you can do so maybe I can adjust the altitude again bring it to 5000 vertical speed bring it down just reduce the throttle It's something really interesting with this G1000. You can do many things. This is one of the refined and the most uh, reliable uh, navigation system in, in the simulators. You can just do multiple things with it. And I just really enjoy, you know, uh, trying out different options in this uh, navigation device. You can press then vertical speed. Oh, sorry, the flight level change. 85 knots and I will just go to 5,000 feet and the plane will level off and 5,000 feet. So now the plane is actually uh, going in the heading mode. If you look at the flight mode in NCAA, 
It's uh, and if I just press this option again, bring it to the GPS mode, and then now I can bring it to the nav mode, and now it's in the GPS mode. So now the plane will actually follow this path. It will go to this point I I to it right, and then it will go towards the final approach fix, and then for the landing. So uh, the uh, the main thing was to actually show you that you can uh, do the arrival again, and uh, the view changed. Maybe the plane is going down. <laughs> That's why. So let's uh, change it like this. Okay. So either you can um, go for the complete arrival and then approach, or maybe you can just skip it by using this direct option. So it's totally up to you. So the plane actually uh, flew to this point, and now I'm back on the track again. And uh, uh, now you can see uh, the runway is there. And uh, plus the plane is following the glide slope. Now you can um, deactivate the autopilot at, at any time in order to land the plane yourself or maybe you can just keep on flying in the autopilot mode for some time and just near the runway. You can turn it off. So I'll just uh, turn it off right now and uh, I'll try to land I crosswinds today. Oh, headwind. You can see two knots, but I think I very aggressively hold the controller. <laughs> so that's why this thing happens. <laughs> you know, so... So that's it. So uh, the ILS uh, approach and landing, and including uh, the RNAV approach and landing, plus uh, the VR approach and landing. This is also covered on my channel. There is this video uh, which I've posted. All the three approaches are there. If you're not really familiar with the, these pr approaches, you can just uh, go and uh, have a look at those videos. But um, for this video, I'm just going to land the plane and uh, finish the video. And uh, as I've told you before, you have to look at the approach plates in order to understand the missed approach procedures. Maybe you have to just fly it three, four times in order to practice your landing as well. It's a very good tool to basically polish your skills. And at this time again, if I feel like, you know, I'm not able to land or anything else, then I can just again declare it a missed approach and go, f uh, go for a go around again same thing heading bug is set to 270 degrees again the localizer is there the frequency and plus the VR so this is uh, something standard that you have to do before you land This is runway 28 right and on the right side you can see the building of the terminal. And that's it. So that's how you do this. If you've got any questions, you can ask me in the comment section. Or if you want to add anything to this video, the comment section is there for you. <laughs> that was a bit of a roll. <laughs> Anyhow, thank you very much for staying with me. Have a nice day. Hope to see you soon.